There seems to be a parting of company, so to speak, on the uh, Biden and Harris campaign administration apparatus. They're not getting along very well. And in fact, I honestly believe that Joe Biden, if he knows who he's voting for, is likely voting for Donald Trump, assuming Jill doesn't just fill in the bubble for Harris on his behalf. It's getting that bad. Axios has reported that tensions rise between Harris and Biden teams as election nears. The relationship between Kamala Harris' team and Joe Biden's White House has been increasingly fraught in the final weeks before Election Day. Ten people familiar with the situation tell Axios. Why it matters. Biden's team wants Harris to win the election, but many senior Biden aides remain wounded by the president being pushed out of his re-election bid and are still adjusting to being in a supporting role on the campaign trail. In short, they're mad they're probably not going to have a a job in the next administration, assuming Harris is able to eke out a win. Uh, They're too much in their feelings, one close Harris ally said of the president's team, a sentiment shared even by some White House aides. Driving the news, some on Harris' team say that top White House aides aren't sufficiently coordinating Biden's message and schedule to align with what's best for the vice president's campaign, including Biden throwing Harris under the bus. Biden gave an impromptu press conference in the White House briefing room Friday, the first time in his entire administration to enter that room, just as Harris was about to do an event in Michigan, ensuring that her event would get less TV coverage than it otherwise would have, and also saying that he and Harris are singing from the same song sheet and that he delegated everything to her her, which means everything Biden is immediately and irreparably tied to Harris and basically throwing her under the bus. Earlier in the week, Harris criticized Florida Governor Ron DeSantis for not tasking uh, or taking her call about the recent hurricanes, only for Biden to praise DeSantis soon after being great or for being gracious and cooperative. A person familiar with the situation told Axios that Biden hadn't been briefed on Harris comments and he probably would have thrown her under the bus either way because he really seems to hate her a whole lot, and rightfully so. Biden has been eager to boast about a robust jobs report, helping to end the strike by the Longshoremen's Union and other perceived victories recently, even though that robust jobs report, most of it is made up jobs in the government and should not be applied to the general employment in the country. Harris has been trying to focus on voters' pocketbook concerns, including inflation. Uh, One person involved with Harris' campaign told Axios the White House is lacking someone in the room, uh, thinking first and foremost about how things would affect the campaign. Or maybe they do have someone in the room and they just don't care. Maybe the Biden administration is actually going scorched earth as revenge for shoving Joe out the door unceremoniously. Zoom in. The tensions have played out on the uh, staff level, too. Harris' team has been trying to add staff to the vice president's official office to hand the bigger workload. It's been frustrating at the White House's pace uh, in getting people detailed for that, according to two people familiar, familiar with the matter. Again, looking like they're deliberately undercutting Kamala Harris to make her lose. The White House has been working to help Harris' team, but has been frustrated by some of the rules about who can be detailed and when. Several Biden aides have joined, Har- uh, have joined Harris' campaign, but some feel uh, like they've been labeled as disloyal by Biden's team for leaving or even considering it. And To be fair, that's because they are disloyal. Remember, Harris stabbed Biden in the back with a coup. They absolutely deserve to be labeled as disloyal. A White House official told Axios everyone from the president on down knows how important the election is, and we always anticipated a number of staff would want to transition from the administration to the campaign for the final stretch because they want to keep having jobs after the election is over. But now it basically is over and Trump has won, but only if you actually get out and vote. On Harris' campaign, there's uh, also awkwardness uh, between some who were on Biden's original campaign staff and Harris' allies who've been installed in recent weeks. In the weeks after Harris became the Democratic nominee, there were uh, squabbles about whether Biden's main surrogates on television would continue in those roles or if new faces would emerge. Two people familiar with the matter told Axios. Harris' team uh, prevailed and new surrogates began appearing frequently, just shuffling off the old regime entirely, throwing them 
out the door. Uh, some on Harris' team are wary of Biden campaign crew uh, they're now working with. Well, yeah, because it's obvious that Biden seems to be working to undercut her because he's super mad. And again, I've said it before. I think Biden is going to vote Trump. After all, Biden's team publicly argued that Harris was less electable than Biden in the weeks after the president's disastrous ju- er, debate in June. And the only thing that changed is that the pollsters started lying about Harris's popularity to try and make it look believable that the coup was was successful. At the end of the day, we'd switch uh, to candidates who would, according to polls, be less likely to win than Joe Biden, the only person ever to defeat Donald Trump. Deputy campaign manager manager Rob Flaherty wrote in a letter to supporters after the debate citing polling data, which was correct, and it was likely the last correct polls until earlier this week. Uh, what they're saying, White House spokesperson Andrew Bates told Axios President Biden endorsed Vice President Harris immediately after leaving the race, probably on the promise that his son would get a pardon and nothing more, rejecting other approaches that would divide the party and has attested uh, to her leadership abilities and continually made clear his support for her, basically also in the process, undercutting and undervaluing her ability to perform as president, which, I mean, she does that on her own anyway. There's a whole lot more there. It's really ugly, and it's just going to get uglier. This is the last desperate acts of a dying machine that is the Democrat Party, and they're going to lose. It might be the end of the party forever, but only time will tell for that one. You got to get out and vote, though. You have to destroy the Democrat Party, because once we've done that, we can start to fix the problems in the GOP. Till next time. Thanks for watching.